What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Trapper channel, coming to you with another edition of Buddies, Leans, Likes, and Locks. MLB, hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way, you become a prize member. Great content is going live here in our little neck of the YouTube woods. The YouTube woods that had the Usai Kikuchi ladder, that had the Cronenworth and the Yelich Homer. Again, Hopefully you're listening to me when I'm explaining out those things. I did a really, really good in-depth job of talking through the Yelich thing. The Loft talked about how there were, were going to probably be no numbers where I wasn't going to be betting him. Surely enough, that ended up being the case. The Cronenworth, again, there's only so many hours in the day. I try to respond to every single DM, try to respond to everybody. Sometimes things fall there. The craps, uh, the craps, that's, I wish I were playing craps. That'd be fun. But uh not as good as sports betting, obviously, but uh, wish you guys could see the DMs from today. Had multiple from multiple sports, Masters, MLB, NBA. I'm trying to re just respond to absolutely everybody. Not enough hours in the day, but overall felt pretty good about the work here. So if you're watching this video, you already have a leg up. And again, the premium Discord, going to have to prioritize them, talk through a couple of the issues that we're having where it's like MLB only the rest of the way. You can watch NBA, Lindy's, but not going to be posting anything here purely because I don't have the time to just be able to come back in and say, hey, you know, you need to post here when I have multiple live shows throughout the day. And then obviously the evenings. Oh, oh boo, Eric, you have to talk sports all day. What an awesome job. Well, it is an awesome job. And I absolutely love it. I take responsibility in it, but I also take responsibility in being cautious with your money and not just giving you plays for the sake of giving you plays. That's why I came up with Leans Likes Locks. The whole idea is that Leans, I can be more responsible. I don't have to just give you a play for the sake of giving you a play from a specific game. That drives me nuts because otherwise... What are, are you factoring in the price? Are you just simply saying this is going to win? Again, for me, locks, it's an idea. It's not necessarily just saying, oh, this is not going to miss because there's plenty of locks that have missed. Like, we're very aware of that. People are tracking those nonstop ad nauseum through NBA. Really, really good. Through MLB so far, eh, not as good, but we've hit the brakes. And again, being very frugal in terms of when I'm going to utilize the lock button early in the season as we accumulate sample size and I get more confident in who is what and where and how and all of those great things. But lean, something I'm thinking about betting or I'll explain it like the Yelich thing today. I did a pretty in-depth job trying to help you just see that like, there are no ways that I wasn't going to be firing that one up because plus 600, plus 650, wherever it was in the opening one. Sure, you maybe won't get the exact same number coming back, but uh, for the most part, looked pretty damn good to me in uh, Cincinnati. Bet we talked about that one again today. A light, that is something that is on the card automatically. Half unit, again, quarter unit, because again, if there aren't odds out yet, I'm not going to just give you the play. The price is so, so Mm, it matters so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm introducing the lean like idea where something I did throughout NBA where it's like, look, I think I know where this number is going to open and you should probably attack it. And I tell you what the number is. There are easy ways of tracking it. I mean, you can look at the history of pretty much any prop that's existed. And obviously those are the ones I'm most concerned about getting like 75, 80% of my action lies in prop betting. So it is what it is, but we'll talk through the ins and outs of this slate. Wanted to get that off my chest from the get-go and yeah, locks, those are a unit or more. Sadly, ended up on Miami plus two in the basketball streets. Thanks a lot, Jason Kidd. Why are you playing Doncic and Kyrie? You have the five seed, but that's a conversation for the NBA show. You can check that out, but we got seven games in the MLB streets. Sorry for such a long intro, but felt like it was necessary. And plus this is going to fly. Producer Jacob, hi, hello. Let's get to the picks. Our first game out the gate, the Mets, the Atlanta Braves. Oh boy. Mets just figuring a couple things out. And Brandon Nemo can hit the ball very, very hard. That's useful. Matt Olson on the other side he hits the ball very, very hard. Just looking at my graph, everybody on Atlanta hits the ball hard except for Orlando Garcia, but we don't really expect that from him, do we? No, 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 we don't. But anywho, uh, we expect Jose Quintana. Again, a couple of pitchers that shifted, and that kind of Made it even more of a headache in the afternoon evening as you had Houston shift pitchers. And well, now we're talking about Jose Quintana again. 501 expected slugging pushed him back here to this afternoon, 1220 start time on the East Coast, 920 a.m. on the West Coast. Bet you'll be watching the Masters too. But Q, you know by now, not my favorite pitcher so far this season. All those numbers, they look pretty damn similar to what we've seen here of late 12 percent barrel percentage of uh, k rate down he had an 18.8 percent k rate in 2023 it's down to 17 percent through a couple of stars here i don't really find any way she performed that i'm ever going to be back with this kind of a lineup and in fact i'm a little bit surprised that we're not looking at wider numbers than what we got uh in this one at the moment however however it's not exactly the cream of the crop coming out here for atlanta with the spencer strider injury we talked about it they had some 
They've had some interesting call-ups and some interesting situations. Guys who have been enacted to duty. Alan Winnens getting his first start here last season. 4.24 expected ERA and 534 innings pitched at the big league level. So there's that. He is a lengthened out starter. There is that. But overall, the fastball velo is fastball velo is just not there. He's a guy who throughout all of last season was down around 90 miles per hour. And at the big league level, if you don't have like another great breaking pitch to pair with it, it's going to be problematic. And that's what it appears we have here. So uh, Alan Winnett's not going to be backing you either. I'm going to lean Atlanta still, but I don't like the total. And I find it to be one tough little cookie to try to crack. Had to change the camera for the people. Don't mind me. Anywho, we've got Milwaukee. We've got Cincinnati up here next. And uh, yeah, Yelich continues to just loft the ball. It's a different dude. He's going to be hitting loft with the ball. 10.7 degree launch angle. Actually came down like 0.4 from it. But of course, he goes yard. We're very, very happy with him in the moment. But uh, pretty good opportunity for him yet again going up against Nick Martinez. It is fastball Freddy on the mound for Milwaukee. So uh, this isn't exactly an attainable line to me. Again, we are going to be very, very specific. Uh, not going to be many locks this season, I don't think. Going back and going through my previous couple of years of betting, I do. Why is there freaking moth in here? Don't mind me. Get out of here. Anywho, I'm looking here at the board for Milwaukee. Minus 126. We can probably get that down inside of minus 120, minus 115. We could start entertaining Milwaukee money line here. Cincinnati, we know the power that exists there, but Freddie Peralta on the mound, and then Nick Martinez. Again, I'm very interested in the Milwaukee side of things, but there was no way that coming off yesterday that I wasn't going to break down the Yelich thing once more for the people. He's lofting the baseball. 10.7 degree launch angle. Brought that up from the onset. He's always been hard hitting it. He looks healthy. The back is healthy. And he gets another righty on the mound in Nick Martinez, who just, just not a big fan. 23% K rate last season. I think that's going to come down. 3.98 expected ERA. I'm expecting negative regression. So like... I think this is a spot where we maybe just grab some Milwaukee and we take Yelich, but for the time being, again, better than plus 500 in this spot. Plus 600 yesterday, I thought we were going to... We're just having that conversation again. Doubt we're even going to probably get that, but you know what? I'm putting lean like next to it because, again, I do believe this is a 40-jack player in the event that he continues this with the launch. It is just going to happen. I love it. I need it. We're going to bet it. But it's a lean like because I need to see the app. Odd Shopper friends, OS Premium Tools, Discord, Insider Access, $14.95 weekly, $49.95 monthly. Great stuff. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Fire it up uh, and then use promo code LINDY when you do. 20% off using code LINDY. Expert picks, Discord, Premium Tools, everything in the link below down there. Again, the Premium EV tool. Like that, that, that is the reason you want to be signing up for this. Of course, you're going to get my baseball betting card here now too, especially because I don't have to do the NBA one here until we're to the NBA playoffs, which I feel good about. Feel good about it. It's just craziness in the times. Again, check out NBA Lindy's. But 20% off at the link below, promo code Lindy. Back to the picks we go. Game number three, Minnesota at Detroit. Uh, Yeah, these are pitchers. This is cold weather. This is fun. My Lord, Pablo Lopez, four kids, and I got to take all of that ass to show biz. Okay. Tariq Skubal on the other side, like saw young caliber arm, 164 expected batting average. We've been backing him for years. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I, I love him. He's going up against my twins. That's not good. But this ballpark in Detroit, going to be cold. Going to be deep, blowing in from right and across the field a little bit more. But Pablo Lopez, I still feel pretty good about the stuff. 2.84 ERA, 3.27 expected ERA. Last start, it's a little bit of a hiccup against the Guardians. Three earned, four runs, not great. But we're going to see the strikeouts come up because Cleveland has just historically never really struck out that much. So I'm not reading too much into it, and nor should you. I think we move along our merry way. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Under six and a half at even money. Whew, that's a low, low number. And obviously, if it's tied 3-3, I apologize. You lost, but uh, I lost too. So there's that. Let's not do that. Let, let's Let's go pitching. Next up, we have Houston at Kansas City here, and uh, hopefully you caught that they switched up pitchers on us. Again, those are the frustrating things that it's hard to tell. Know what your sportsbook rules are. If it has to be that pitcher for action, you never really know. It's just one of those things you have to keep apprised yourselves. Again, I, I can't be there in your living room telling you, hey, by the way, 
if you have your alerts on on X, or, you know, if you hit me up on the Discord or something like that, yeah, we can we can have that conversation for sure. But otherwise, tough for me to just go out of my way to, to let you know that right from the get go. But Spencer Arigetti threw it fast, threw it hard, nine swings and misses over the course of the game, but they got murdered. Load up. Man, we've had a lot of ref rap references already. Anywho, Hunter Brown, we get to break him down again, going up against Brady Singer. Brady Singer's pretty freaking good, friends. I said, I like this arm. He was awful last year. 48.6% hard hit percentage, 4.96 expected ERA, but he'd gotten better. I want to get better. In 2022, coming off of a pretty lackluster 2021 is his first real stint to the big. See, so he had over 1,000 pitches when he was 23 in 2020, but I'm going to reduce that one a little bit because... You know, just getting ramped up. 2021, only 200 pitches. More of a sample size to work off of. But, but I do got to point out, I do have to point out, there's one big hiccup that we have here with him. And that's that he faced the Twins and the White Sox. And now he's facing the Astros. Again, small sample size. It's going to look good in the box score to a certain extent. But this is why it's so hard to know. Because you need to have them play multiple teams. Any good teams. Again, my Twins, as much as I love them, as much as I cheer for them. Not the best lineup in baseball. I'm going to strike out more than the average bear. As for Hunter Brown, we know how much I don't like him at this point. 52% hard hit percentage thus far. 312 expected batting average. Again, just the two outings. Just the two outings. But 4.27 expected ERA last season. 5.82 thus far this season. Not great. Not ideal. We're running back what I threw out there yesterday. And yes, it's going to be a lean like yet again. Because I need you to know how serious I am about these things. Bobby Witt. Bobby Witt is so damn good. He does not rip you off at the plate. He doesn't walk a whole heck of a lot. He puts the ball in play, and when he does, it gets hit hard, except for today, of course. 69.7% hard hit percentage, 852 expected slugging. Bobby Witt, let's go. Two plus hits. We're getting aggressive. And if I had to lock something, if I had, if you absolutely made me on this slate, like you're going to only bet one thing, I think this is probably the one. We got JP Sears in the Oakland Athletics going up against John Gray and the Texas Rangers. And John Gray, friends, has been bit by the regression bug. It's weird because he had some really good years actually in Colorado at altitude. Uh, good in the box score, at least. 2019, 3.84 ERA, 4.79 expected ERA. That's not ideal. But last season, found ways to reduce some of the hard hit. Sub 40% yet again here. So far this season, 48.3 with a 9.85 expected ER. Yaki. The other part of this is this Oakland lineup against righties. This is kind of doing some of the work working through them because I just kind of expected them to strike out a lot. 27.8% K rate so far, 338 plate appearances. 85 WRC plus isn't exactly nothing. So, you know, they're going to be one of the worst lineups in baseball when it's all said and done. But right now, they're like just about the middle of the pack, which is a compliment, kind of. I'm Ron Burgundy. Something like that. Anyway, we've got on the other side of this one, a pitcher in JP Sears, who I guess he's kind of one of the caliber arms for them. Somebody who from, I almost said the Southpaw stance. Can you tell I've been looking at UFC 300 a lot too? Thank God I don't have to cover that one. I, I don't have the bandwidth right now. But 7.77 expected ERA. Lucky sevens is kept for him or his family or his agent. 4.64 expected ERA last season. So we are seeing a lot of great things so far. And then what happened to the swing and miss? Went from 17.7 .7 in 2022 to 21.9% in 2023. And thus far this season, friends, against the Guardians. Well, I guess that's kind of a trend. And the Tigers, a grand total of... One strikeout apiece. You heard me. Two strikeouts total on the entire season. That, friends, is not good when you've had, like, what, 37 batted balls in place? To two swing misses? Oh, you give Texas an opportunity to get up there at the plate and just wallop it? You're taking over. And nine and a half? How did nine and a half be the opening number here? I, I get that it's not like the most hitter-friendly ballpark that exists on planet Earth. It's certainly not the old Arlington, that's for sure, but this lineup makes up the difference. Josh Smith and Jonah Heim and Marcus Simeon and all these dudes. Friends, you want to fire it up, you should fire it up. We like the over. Nine and a half. I like it. Friends, the first bet safety net up to $1,500. You sign up the link below. Get your bonus bets if your first bet loses. The link is down there. Sign up. If you're 21 and over, if you have a gambling prompt, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Really, it's as simple as that. I have nothing else for you. It's an awesome deal, so take advantage. Back to the picks. 
We got two games to go. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell as we break down a guy that I didn't think was going to be this good. Jared Jones and the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the Phillies. Phillies and Ranger Suarez. Ranger Suarez, pretty good. Pretty good thus far. You got to be happy. 2.7 expected ERA. Last year, we had some moments where we would back Ranger Suarez. We picked just our spots. 2022, 2021, really good years there for Ranger Suarez necessarily have it at all points last year 28 barrels that was up 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 only over 2,000 pitches there 22 percent k rate was nice though 26.8 percent so far this season that 2.27 expected era against the braves and the nationals that's a really really good start to a year if you're ranger suarez again gotta feel optimistic i'm not gonna go crazy trying to back him here but maybe just maybe jared jones is that dude I don't know. He's a second rounder from 2020. He definitely has pedigree. La Murata. He's definitely a pedigree dude. 35.4% K rate. Now he's faced Miami and we know they're kind of a cave dweller. And then Baltimore, which again, that's a pretty decent lineup there in his home debut to, to really go out and throw it down. So uh, yeah, way to go, Jared Jones. He's got decent stuff. Like the velocity is ridiculous 97 miles per hour pretty happy right out of the gate looking through his pitch mix think it's going to be something that transcends and then you get a phillies matchup where excuse me don't know why that was happening 24.3 percent k rate against righties 247 plate appearances and just a 73 wrc plus let me think of this as a really good team against right-handed pitching because you have marsh you have schwarber you have harper it's ironic because literally only Marsh for a quarter of a unit ended up on the card out of the Phillies. Way to go, Trey Turner, by the way. Uh, he had a number of everybody, and that just didn't come to fruition. But anywho, we're not talking about yesterday. We're talking about today. And today, friends, I do think Jared Jones, over 6.5K, well, over 6, so 5.5Ks is the number over on FanDuel. Minus 135, dipped my toe in the pool for half a unit, but also went quarter, similar to like what we did yesterday, laddering up on Mr. Yusai Kikuchi. I think 7 plus case yes so six six plus so that's the five and a half and then seven plus that'd be like a make-believe six and a half but you know it's usually listed on FanDuel at seven plus gonna be nice plus money there in that mid 150s margin friends mid 160s anything better than that friends seven plus k's get yourself some And our last play of the night, Baltimore, Boston. I am actually going to be back in Grayson Rodriguez here. Baltimore, they called up the guy, Jackson Holiday. We're going to accumulate sample size on him, but let me just tell you, he's good. Matt Holiday, he's got the pedigree. I brought him up yesterday. It is what it is. Gunnar Henderson. Oh, yeah. Jordan Westberg hitting the ball really hard. 61.5% hard hit percentage. And then Garrett Whitlock. Decent start to the season, but a 333 X Woba, the walk rate coming up. And Grayson Rodriguez gives up hard hits, so he's got to get through some tough lefties in that red. Or not red I saw a tweet from Adam, one of my buddies, that was talking about this joke, and you guys don't care. I'm not going to try to justify it. I sounded like an idiot. Oh, let's not sound like an idiot with this. Baltimore money line. I think this is the prudent play, considering the number that you're getting here right now at the moment. Minus 115, I'm pretty down with that. Think they're the better baseball team all around. And I think Grayson Rodriguez is the better stuff. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays that exist on the board for this lovely little seven gamer that we have before us, obviously, with the double. I don't think there's going to be a double header. We'll see what happens with the postponement from yesterday. I doubt it. I doubt it. But either who, uh, hop in that premium Discord down below. Again, premium uh, code Lindy. Uh, get in that premium Discord. Come hang out with me. Good stuff. We'll be talking Masters. We'll be talking NBA. We'll be talking MLB. I'm just sitting in the chair all day. All day. Just hanging out but a lot of MLB. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets there on Thursday.